Hey, it's your open source advocate. Wanted to talk a little bit more today about this program that I've been using for documentation. Um, it's really nice and it's actually very easy to use. It lays things out really well. It's called Bookstack. It's a really great system and it allows you to break things apart into books. Those books have chapters, those chapters have sections. Um, very easy to segment your information and your documents into separated pieces of information. The nice thing about it is that you can break that information apart into those sections and those chapters and make it very easy for people to read. So really it's just a nice wiki system. Um, looks better than your than your average wiki though, which is really great and it's got a lot of capabilities with a markdown editor, things like that built in. So if we just kind of scroll down here, you can see the features uh, that they tout about it, which is pretty nice. Um, it does have integrated authentication, which is great. Um, quite a few powerful features, simple requirements and nice markdown editor if you want to use that which is awesome I love markdown it makes it really easy if you keep going down there is a demo that you can try with them before you go do the install there's an image manager built into it uh, the page editor of course so quite a bit of information and things that are broken down you also get profile pages so if you run this a little bit more like a blog or a public wiki you can see information about the people that are contributing and what they're contributing to as well which I think is great to, to kind of know a little bit about a person when they're contributing to a wiki and what they really know about what they've documented. So we'll continue on. I know you want to get into the part that's most interesting. So we're going to use their instructions on how to do this installation. They have a script that they've created, which is pretty great. Um, so what I'm going to do is create a DigitalOcean droplet. And I'm going to go here, click on droplets. So remember DigitalOcean, that's what they call their virtual servers. I'm just going to leave it on Ubuntu 18.04. I'm going to leave it on standard. I'm going to go down here to the $10 a month. I'll leave the block storage. I'll leave that set. I'm going to do a one-time password. We just want one droplet. Um, in this case, I will call this docs.opensourceisawesome.com. And we will create it. Once that gets created, I want to go set a DNS A record so that I have the actual IP address being pointed to by that subdomain that I just gave it. So we'll give it just a second to finish getting created and then we'll grab the IP address from the system here and we'll go put that into our DNS record. So it's done. We will copy that IP address. I'm using hover here, so I've got opensourceisawesome.com. I'm on my DNS settings. I'm just going to go here and click on add a record. And in the host name, I'm going to put docs and the IP address. I will paste that IP address. I'll tell it I want it up in five minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to go check my email real quick to get my one-time password from uh, DigitalOcean. We're going to SSH into the system as root. Yes, and we're going to put in the password that they sent, and we're going to paste it in again. Now we've got to enter our new password, and one more time, and we're in. So now we're going to run the update process, and then we'll let the machine update, and then we'll get ready to install Bookstack. All right, we're all up to date. So now we're going to go grab that information from the Bookstack site. And we want this line here first because we're going to go actually get the script that will install everything for us. It went and got the script. Now we need to make the script executable, so that's this command. So the change mod all plus executable, basically. And then the last step is to run the script. We don't actually need the sudo here because we're in root. So 
So here it's asking for the domain. This is why I set up the subdomain before I started the install. So I'm going to put docs.opensourceisawesome.com. And what it does is in the side with Bookstack, it goes in and sets that up for a few places where you get some redirects when you click on certain links. So you want to have that set correctly or it'll try to point you to the IP address or the local host, things like that. And whenever you're not hitting that from that specific machine, it, it won't work. It won't redirect you correctly. So the nice thing about the script that just ran is that it actually took care of everything that we would have had to do manually. So everything should be set up. It's giving us this address to actually go and see if everything is set up the way we expect. So I'm just going to control and click on it. And we'll see if it opens up. It does. So we opened it up here in Firefox. So it gives you these links to click. Now you need to notice that these are not secure links. These are HTTP links. If you want to run this in any kind of production mode, you would definitely want to go and actually put the SSL certificates on it using Let's Encrypt. Or if you're running it on your own domain or your own home servers, you might want to put um, self-signed certificates on it. But something to, to encrypt the data when it's being moved back and forth between the server and your machine. So if you look right above it, it gives you the default login credentials here. So this is what I have to use the first time, and then I'll go in and change those things. So I'm going to go back here and actually type these in. And no, I don't want to save those. So we're in, and I do want to edit the profile because I want to change the security of it. So I'm going to change the information. All right, now that I've changed that information, I'm just going to save my changes. I don't want it to save that, so I'm going to log out. And first, I'm going to make sure that the original credentials no longer work. Perfect, that's what I expected. Now I'm going to log in with the credentials I changed it to. And we're in. Okay, I've got to tell this. Never, or it's going to keep popping up. So once you get in here, you can see a few different options here at the top. So first is settings, and anytime you want to change anything about a site, you should probably do that before you start adding content, just to make sure you don't have negative consequences for the content that you're adding. So I'm going to click on settings. Here you can see features and security, so you can turn on and off public access. So basically this creates guest access, if that's what you prefer to call it. But if you turn this on, um, it means that people can come to the site and actually see the content without having to log in. Um, so if you wanted this to be some kind of web blog or wiki that you wanted everybody to be able to look at, then you would want to check this box. Additionally, you can disable comments. Um, depending on whether you want to have comments allowed or not, you can disable that here. Then you've got some customization, so you can change this from book stack to say whatever whatever makes uh, sense for your site. Um, so the editor right now is WYSIWYG. You can change that to be a markdown editor right here. If you prefer the markdown side, WYSIWYG is pretty easy to use. Most people understand it. They have it on lots of websites today, so unless you just really like markdown, there's really not a reason to change it. Uh, you can actually set up an application logo so you can change what they have for the default image. And you can also change the primary color. You can also change the application home page. So if you don't want it to be the default page, you could actually start it on one of your specific book pages. So you can change it to a book, um, to a shelf, which so a shelf holds books. Or if you want a specific page in a book, you could also set it to that. 
So for the header content, you can set some custom HTML if you want to right here. Nothing that I need to do, but you can. Finally, registration. So if you want to allow other users to register and contribute, then you'd want to enable this uh, capability right here. So the default user um, role whenever they register is something you need to set. I would not set it as admin. I would definitely set it down something a little bit lower, maybe editor, viewer, um, just depending on how you set up the site. But unless you're intentionally wanting to make this person an admin, I, I would not make it admin by default. You can also set up domain restrictions. So if you find that your site gets spammed or people are trying to spam your site and you can detect which domains they're coming from, you can also set that here. So you can do this with comma separated values. So if you said google.com comma yahoo.com, now of course you wouldn't want to do that because you would basically restrict all the domains that you would probably want to be able to access your site, but there are plenty out there that you might not want to. And then finally, email notifications. So you can check this box and, and then save your changes and everything would be complete there. So I'll just save. You also have maintenance. So you can basically clean up the images through the maintenance section here. So if you have a lot of images that are being put on the site and then you get some images that aren't being used, you can just clean those up. You have users, so you can access the different users and change their roles. And then of course you can change the roles and what they're allowed to do and create new roles. So inside of Bookstack, it uses the concept of shelves and books. So shelves hold books. So you can create different shelves or different areas for where different content would be. And then the books would hold that content. So if you have groups of books or shelves, that may be something of interest to you. If you were going to have people writing information about science and technology, and then a different group of people writing about art and history, and a separate group of people writing about language, you might want to create shelves for each of those categories. And then those people would put their respective books for those categories onto those shelves. So you have this concept of shelves. So you can create a shelf. You can give it a name. Brief description. If you already have books going and you have not actually created a shelf and you do that, you can drag them into this area to add them to the shelf. You can create a cover image for the shelf. So if there's something specific about science that I wanted, I could put that image here. And then you can tag the shelf as well to make it easier to find the shelf whenever people are doing searches later. So I'm just going to save it as is. And we have science. And then, of course, we can go back to shelves. And we'll see we have two shelves, art and science. So if we click into science, now here we can create a book. So we can call the book. Again, you can create a cover image for your book. And you can put tags to make things easier to search. Save. And you've started a book. So you can add chapters to the books and you can create pages within those chapters. So it's just like anything else. It's just a wiki that you're designing out and kind of starting from the concept of shelves with books on it. Um, I really like this. I've put a lot of my own documentation for my open source projects into um, my own version of Bookstack that I run. And it's pretty great. I, I've really enjoyed using it. It's very easy to use. The, the people who are making it are, are really good. They've come up with some great concepts and it's very clean looking, which I also like. Um, some of the older wiki software that's out there is a little bit muddled looking these days. Wikipedia is a good example, but uh, MediaWiki, just, I know there's different templates for them and things like that, but they start to look a little bit ragged after a while. So this is a really great option, a great solution. Um, if you're interested in doing something where you're trying to keep track of some documentation and you're looking for a good open source project, I would highly recommend Bookstack as one of your options to look at. That's it for this week. I hope you'll join me next time. Um, if you've enjoyed it, like and subscribe and leave me some comments with constructive criticism if you need to so that I can improve and make sure that I'm using the best of your time. Thanks.